Hello again, welcome all and sundry. Today I'm going to talk about how sometimes you just have to laugh. Sometimes when you have a brain injury or any of the associated conditions, you just have to turn around, put your hands in the hair, in the hair, in your hair, not in your hair, especially when not when you're wearing a hat, but sometimes you have to put your hands in the air and say, if I don't laugh, I'll cry. I'll give you a few instances of my instances. I can't even speak today. I'll, hey, you have to laugh. You see, there's a good instance straight away. Um, every time I leave the house, I have to laugh because I have to do a routine. Keys, wallet, phone. If I've got my keys, I can get in the house. If I've got my wallet, I can pay for something. And if I've got my phone in the emergency, I can ring someone. The amount of times I've got halfway up the street and patted my pockets and realised I've forgotten my phone or my wallet. My neighbours must watch me with glee. There he goes. He'll turn around in a minute. He'll turn around in a minute. Oh, no, maybe I forgot. There he goes. And he's home. And watch the back door. There he goes. And he's out again. And he's away like a racehorse down the street because he's now a couple of minutes late than he thought he was going to be. Um, I've paid for meals with a bus pass, or at least tried to. I've not paid any attention. I've just reached into my wallet, pulled out my bus pass and tried to pay for a meal with my bus pass. You have to laugh. When a waiter's looking at you, as if he's examining the photo on there, looking, you ugly git. And you're thinking, just take my money. And he's thinking, this is a bleeding bus pass. You have to laugh. But you also have to laugh, conversely, when the bus driver's looking at you as if you're mental, when you're trying to pay for a £1.25 ticket with a credit card. Because you've not realised you haven't got the bus pass in your hand because you've probably left it at the bloody restaurant. Hey-ho! You have to laugh. I'm partially blind. I may have told you before. I have absolutely no peripheral vision on my left-hand side. I can't see that hand. Now I can see that hand. And it's gone. Can't see it at all. That makes people coming up to speak to me a chore, an ordeal. Because until they're two and a half millimetres away from my face, I don't see anyone. The amount of time our daughter, our 11-year-old daughter, has come up to me for a hug, and until she's right upon me, I don't even realise she's there, and suddenly it goes like this. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! Stop doing that! Because they don't realise. My wife sleeps on the left-hand side of the bed, I sleep on the right. It's just the way we sleep. It's comfortable. However, that also means I can't bleed and see her. So sometimes she'll roll over, graze my arm, and I'll crap myself. Talking of which, you have to laugh. It's not just my brain affected by the medication and the smack on the head, the scar on my head. It's other parts of my body. I've walked down the street before with company. That doesn't seem important at the moment, but when you hear the rest of the story, you'll realise it is pretty darned important. With company and suddenly felt my stomach gurgle and the intense need to break wind. I broke wind and shat myself in the middle of the street and walked a mile home looking like I was smuggling drugs in my underwear. You have to laugh. You have to laugh, because if you don't laugh, you'll cry. On the same street, a couple of years later, I suddenly realised, along with company again, that I was about to miss the bus I was waiting to catch, and pay for with a credit card, probably. I started running, well, jogging, lightly, and turned left to head towards the bus stop. Remember that, people? Turn left. Where stood a bollard? One of those black wrought iron, waist-high bollards. I didn't see it. It wasn't in front of me. I turned left and carried on running. And the bollard hit me right where the sun don't shine. At speed. At full speed. At least 15 people saw this. Saw me keeling over a bollard in the middle of the street because, well, let's just say a certain part of my anatomy was screaming in agony. I waddled home like a crippled duck. And then spent the next half an hour watching my own tallywhacker turn a strange shade of purple, brown, blue and green. It was like watching a child's kaleidoscope. 
and then spent the next two weeks going for a pee and staring down at a black penis. I looked like I was walking around with a char-grilled sausage in my underwear. The other side of the underwear from the drugs I'd been smuggling two weeks beforehand. But you have to laugh. You have to laugh. A similar thing to the toilet accident has happened to me in bed. I felt the intense need to eat a couple of pears. A couple of pears turned into five pears. And what I've just described happened in bed, on the sheet. I had no idea it was happening, but you have to laugh. A few months later, my wife decided to massage my back as I, I fractured a vertebrae in my spine. In the accident, sometimes I get quite sore back. She massaged my back and it was absolutely blinding until my nose started pouring my blood. So now the sheet's got blood on it. And mm, the other thing on it, I snore in bed. Occasionally I drool. So now my bed sheet's got drool on it, it's got blood on it, it's got crap on it. It's been washed, it's been bleached, it's been sanitised. Our bed sheets look like the Turing Shroud. But with me, not Jesus Christ. Except this is real and not fake, allegedly. Our bed has more DNA of me on it than the, the numerous blood samples I've given into hospitals. But you have to laugh. I'll wander around the house now just to show you how you have to make light of everything. I'm going upstairs now, but I think I told you in my last film, or the one before that, I can't remember, I've lost track, that on Friday this week I'm having a sleep study in hospital. I've got to stay overnight being filmed fast asleep in hospital. That'll be fun. I started a poll couple of weeks ago, a week ago, I don't know, of what I should wear during this sleep study. And the overwhelming winner was Kermit lounge pants. I don't think anybody believed me that I had any. There's the bad boys. That's what I'll be wearing during my sleep study in three days time. Because you have to laugh. And just to prove... What I said in my last film was true, that she always spends her entire life either on my knee or on the bed. I'll swing around onto the bed. And there she is again. Hi, Curf. There's Curfew. She's always there. She always makes me laugh, because you have to laugh. Because if you don't laugh, you'll get dragged down by crapping the bed, crapping the underwear, paying for meals with a bus pass, paying for a bus with a credit card, or walking into bollards and crippling yourself. Please, my friends, laugh if I can. Anybody can. Speak to you soon.